And so when we're talking about these environmental investments, why are we calling them investments as opposed to just spending or costs associated with um, transitioning the economy? Because they are investments. Here's, here's what it's going to take to get us at least to the, the goal of a 40% reduction. It's going to take large-scale investments in two basic areas. Renewable energy, so solar, wind, geothermal, uh, uh, hydro, small-scale hydro, uh, clean types of, of bioenergy. So investments to build those things out quickly and uh, largely. And then secondly, investments to raise energy efficiency standards. Uh, so they are actually investments. They can be coming from the public sector. They can be coming from the private sector. But we need to build those out. That's step one of the whole program. That's the major part. And then step two is, concurrently, we need to contract our fossil fuel consumption. We just have to, whether you like the oil industry or you don't. If you believe the climate scientists, the, the consensus view among climate scientists, there actually is no choice with respect to significantly contracting not just coal. Yes, coal is the dirtiest fossil fuel when it's burned, but not just coal, but oil and natural gas as well. So that's the whole program. It's investments, positive, big investments in, in energy efficiency and renewable energy, and contraction of uh, production and consumption in fossil fuels. That's all there is to it. It's very straightforward. One of the conclusions that the report comes to is that these investments would total about $200 billion to reach the goals that were set out. Um, so how is this broken down between what you see as a private investment and public or governmental investments? Sort of what percentage does each group of investors have there? Yeah. So the conclusions, as you accurately stated, is that we're looking at in the area of $200 billion per year, mm -hmm. over 20 years, to hit the emission reduction target. Now, how did I get to those numbers? How did myself and my co-authors get to those numbers. I actually had to study up and try to understand that you know, if you invest, for example, in expanding solar energy production, how much energy are you likely to get from a given dollar amount of spending? And the same question with investments in energy efficiency. If we invest in raising the efficiency level for like the building we're sitting in now, how, men, how much does it cost to get efficiency uh, improvements? And so the basic standard that I was using was um, if we spend a uh, billion dollars on uh, energy efficiency, like in buildings or in transportation or in industry, uh, how much are we going to reduce energy consumption, quadrillion BTUs of energy uh, for that billion dollars. And same thing, how much are we going to expand out capacity, the ability to um, deliver energy through renewable sources by spending a billion dollars? So that was really the, that was the question. And so that's actually more fundamental than whether it's public or private. It's just we must expand renewable capacity, public or private, and we must invest to raise efficiency standards, whether it comes from public or private. As it happens in, in our study, we tried to break out what we thought was realistic in terms of uh, that combination. And roughly, we came out thinking, that of the $200 billion per year for 20 years, so that's $4 trillion. Mm -hmm. But 200, it's, these sound like gigantic numbers, but $200 billion in today's economy is 1.2% of GDP. So the whole economy, uh, you know, we're talking about a $17 trillion economy. This is about 1.2%. So it's a lot of money, but it's, 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 you know, it's not overwhelming.
No, what it says is that 98.8% of the rest of the economy doesn't have to make these adjustments. So uh, we're saying about 75% private, 25% direct public. Of the 75% private, though, we need policies that encourage uh, these private investments. So roughly 150 billion uh, in private investments encouraged by public policies and 50 billion direct public expenditure. So that's a huge number because it's $200 billion, but it's also not that big. And as it is, we're already spending in the range of 50 to $60 billion a year on energy efficiency and renewables. So we're one quarter of the way there, which is we still have to do the other 75%. But again, it's, it's not some, it, I'm not saying we have to get into a World War II level of mobilization. We don't have to take over the whole economy. We don't have to change everything about the economy because that's not going to happen. But we do have to do this, you know, one to 2%, one and 1.2%.